Have you ever been involved with a church and found that your skills and your giftings as an artist have a very minimal part in ministry? It seems that praise music, youth groups, preaching, physical labor, prayer, Sunday school, and small groups are all far more appreciated and accepted than the arts. If you feel that it's your gift and your calling and skills given to you by God to be an artist, to be a creator, it can put you in a very confusing and discouraging position. At its best, art is able to satisfy a longing for beauty while communicating profound spiritual, intellectual, and emotional truth about the world God made for his glory. Now, if this is the case, artists using their gift to glorify God and all that he has done should not feel a need to defend themselves, but instead should be supported and encouraged. I don't know if you're an artist or a creator in a church who's struggling with this, or maybe your church is very accepting of art and artists, or maybe you're not even an artistic person and just are interested in hearing about where the church and the arts meet. This is a short series I'm doing on a book called Art for God's Sake, and I hope you enjoy. So how did we end up here? How did our church and our Christian culture arrive at a place where arts are so underappreciated? Well, let's be very careful not to throw the church under the bus so quickly. Generally speaking, over the course of history, the church has not been opposed to the use and the celebration of art, only its abuse. Now, might the church seem a little bit overprotective at times? Sure. But let's not assume that they ever had ill intentions towards art or artists. Let's also remember one very important thing in all of this. Art can easily become an idol instead of an avenue for glorifying the creator of what the art is trying to represent or the creator of the artist themselves. Any artist or creator knows the overpowering feeling of glory, pride, and even obsession over their work, whether it be a painting or a drawing or a new song they wrote or a new recipe they devised or a new poem or anything like that it can easily overwhelm the heart. Art is always tempted to glorify in itself, and nearly every form of art has been used to communicate values contrary to scripture. Art is as fallen as any other aspect of human existence. This fallenness perverts the arts against fulfilling their original purpose. And that purpose is glorifying God. Now, if art is as meaningful and as powerful as many of us would believe, and many of us have even experienced, is there any wonder why the church would fear its abuse? But even through all that, God still uses art. He uses broken art just like he can use broken people. God can use broken art to awaken the conscience and arouse a desire for a better world. But even broken art still does not reveal the redemptive possibilities of a world that is destined for God's glory. We shouldn't be aiming to produce more broken art, art that simply awakens the mind and awakens people to the brokenness of our world and sparks something in them that longs for something better. Our art shouldn't stop there. As artists serving and surrendering to Christ, we should be aiming for much more than that. We should be aiming to produce art that is representative of the redemptive possibilities found in Christ. Art has tremendous power to shape culture and touch the human heart. Its artifacts embody the ideas and desires of the coming generation. If we as the church abandon the artistic community, we lose significant opportunity to communicate Christ to our culture. 
In the next session, we're going to look at how the church should be supporting and responding to the arts and artists, and even look at an example of how God himself directly used artists to do his work. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'd be interested to hear your feedback and your comments and even answer any questions you may have. Till next time.